In the past decade, I've probably played a couple hundred Pokemon fan games and ROM hacks. Some good, some average, and a few that might have left a bad taste in my mouth. But very rarely do I pick up a fan game and really feel like I found something special, something different, something that kind of blew me away. When you look at the gameplay I'm showing on screen, at first, it might not look much more special than your average fan game or a ROM hack. That is until you step into the tall grass and realize that this isn't your normal Pokemon game. In this video, I will be showcasing Project Reloaded, a Pokemon fan game with fully functioning real-time combat. My name is Avery, and let's get started. In Project Reloaded, all of the Pokemon battles are done in real time. But how does this work exactly? You'll be put on the field against your opponent, with the ability to control your Pokemon's movements and attacks that are binded to keys that can be changed at any point. Physical attacks will mostly consist of you charging at the enemy, and special attacks will fire projectiles, while status moves could work either way. Each time you use a move, you will consume power points, but unlike the turn-based games, power points instead work more like a stamina bar that all of your moves share. But don't worry, it does recharge quick enough for battles to still feel quickly paced. Since there are no turns, you're able to swap Pokemon as much as you want. But keep in mind, there is a delay to the switch animation, meaning you can still be attacked as a consequence of doing so. However, when you introduce a real-time combat system to a series that operates on a turn-based one, obviously some systems need to be changed. Luckily, Project Reloaded doesn't fail to do so. Accuracy blurring moves like Smokescreen will shortly block your field of view, while evasion moves like Double Team will create a temporary moving clone to confuse you. Poison and burning effects just deal damage every few seconds. Confusion and Paralysis, however, work quite the same way that they do in the main games by either taking damage or just refusing to move when using an attack. Restoration items can be used in combat, but only for a maximum of 6 times per battle. When two targets hit each other at the same time using the physical attack, they will expectedly both take damage. However, when two projectiles collide, they will often destroy one another, which I think is a very unique way to counter your opponent's attacks. One of the few downsides of this style is that only the Pokemon who lands the fainting blow will get EXP points. But at the same time, I usually counteracted this by just using one of my strong Pokemon to deal most of the damage, and then finishing off the enemy with the Pokemon I wanted to train. Overall, this battle style was very fun, and for the first few days of playing, I didn't want to go back to turn-based Pokemon. Outside of the real-time battle system, Project Reloaded still has some features that separates it from your average fan game. This game has a pretty sizable story and a pretty big region to explore. Your journey begins in a small town at the center of the Star Region, where you are given the quest of failing the Pokedex and collecting all 8 gym badges. While you travel the region, you'll run into different evil teams from previous games, like Team Rocket and Team Aqua. No spoilers, but I honestly didn't think this game's story was anything special. But at least it wasn't shoved in my face and I was freely able to progress through the region without a ton of story cutscenes. The region itself though, was pretty fun to traverse. Most routes had a few small little side areas, which felt quite rewarding for me and probably other players who wanted to explore every nook and cranny. But this was sometimes a double-edged sword, as there were a good couple of times I'd walk through a random path only to find nothing but a dead end. One compliment I have to give to the developers is just how nice the region map looks. However, I do want to add some criticism that the indoor maps having the Generation 3 art style and the outdoor maps having the Generation 4 art style was kind of weird, but that's all it really was and it definitely didn't impact my ability to enjoy the game. I do want to say that just because I didn't enjoy the story doesn't mean that you won't. There are plenty of fan games and ROM hacks with stories I didn't enjoy that many people did, so don't let my opinion stop you from playing. I unfortunately didn't have the time to play the postgame as this entire game was just so long, but I have heard and seen from others that you are actually able to battle all of the gym leaders from Kanto to Sinnoh, as well as travel to two separate mini-regions that weren't on the map I showed previously. Alongside that, this game offers a good amount of side and optional content through quests and like I said before, optional areas. 
You can also catch every Pokemon up to Generation 8, and the traditional starters are easy to obtain, as you'll find them in the overworld as you progress through the story. If that wasn't enough, there are even a few new Pokemon and evolutions. So while playing through Project Reloaded, there were two sizable issues that I really want to provide criticism against. Like I said before, the way EXP points were distributed didn't really bother me. What I had a problem with was how little I was getting. Obtaining EXP in this game kind of felt like a chore, not because of the flat amount I received, but also how long it took to defeat a Pokemon. In the normal games, a fire type at the same level as a grass type should only need about 3 or 4 hits to win. But in Reloaded, I felt like my super effective attacks were only doing a tenth of the enemy's health bar. You could argue that those turn-based attacks take longer to process, but I can just use the speed up button, which, for obvious reasons, I can't do in this game. I also don't have to aim my attacks in turn-based combat, meaning I'm not missing them almost half the time like I am in real-time combat. The second piece of criticism I feel needs to be delivered a bit more harshly. For some reason, the developer thought it was a good idea to give every gym leader six full restores. I've played so many fan games in my time, and I get that mistakes and bad choices happen, but I really can't wrap my head around this one. When I criticize fan-made games, I usually end it with, this is your game, and you can do what you want with it. But I sincerely feel that improving or fixing these issues would drastically improve the player experience. Like, you've been developing this game for 15 years. Wouldn't you want to finish on a good note? Even with some of my negative feelings towards certain aspects of the game, I still think it's incredible, mainly for a reason that took me longer to figure out than I'd expect. Because of the nature of the battle style, you could technically, if you're good enough, take any Pokemon to the top. You're no longer bound by the restrictions of turn-based combat, where the stronger Pokemon almost always wins. With enough dodging, I'm sure even your Rattata could beat the champion on its own. I highly suggest that you at least give it a try, because underneath my complaints lies a really fun and really long Pokemon game. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed, because only 3% of my viewers actually are. But anyways, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.